What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. In this quick guide, I'll be running through all the different graphics options in Deadlock, benchmarking them and showing you the differences between them. Let's get into it. Starting from the very top, the graphics preset. Just keep in mind that I did all of these tests on the DirectX 11 settings. Later on, I do touch on Vulkan, but you'll see why when we get there. For now, testing on my higher end system, between the lowest and highest graphics preset option, I saw a change from about 100 FPS to about 260, which is pretty big. Between each of the different graphics options, you can expect a 30% boost in performance for each step that you go down, all the way to the very bottom step, which will give you about 60% extra performance as we're lowering the resolution so much. Ultimately, I'd recommend playing on the medium option or the second tick and above. Anything below that's going to be super blurry, but we're going to customize things anyways. For the sake of this benchmark, I've run everything on the lowest options, except for the upscaling, which we'll get into now. So first of all, the stretch upscaler. With everything set to high, playing at native 100% resolution, I got around 98 FPS. Based off the numbers from the preset slider above, 100% is native, then high, we'll call it, is about 75% resolution, for which I saw a 30% boost in performance from 98 to about 125. Moving down another tick to 62, there was a 13% FPS improvement from 120 to 140 frames, down another tick to 50% from 140 to 170 FPS, which is about a 20% boost, and finally down to the lowest possible option, 40%, I saw all the way up to 185 FPS. Ultimately, stretch is going to be the blurriest by far, as we're quite literally just rendering in a smaller resolution, blowing it up to be full screen, and we're not getting any extra detail, which is provided using FSR and FSR2. Speaking of, FSR is streets ahead quality-wise, although we can't dip quite as low. Again, using the same preset numbers, with FSR set to 100% resolution, I don't think it really does anything here, but I got around 96 FPS, which I'm pretty sure is native. Taking it a step down to 75, I saw 26% extra frames from 90 to 120, then moving down to 62%, 120 to 140 frames, and finally to 50%, 140 to 160 FPS. Pretty much every option here looks so much better than the stretched resolution, and I'd recommend using either FSR or FSR2, just don't use stretched unless you're trying to play purely native at 100%. However, there was one weird thing that I noticed here. There's quite a bit of aliasing that happens, especially around the truck. On the right side of the scene, there's tons of weird stuff that happens as the camera moves around. FSR2 does get rid of this, and of course, Stretched gets rid of this by just blurring the heck out of everything anyways. Ultimately, if you're going to be using FSR, try sticking to around 70% and above. Then FSR2, again, a huge visual quality increase, and in this, there's none of that weird aliasing flickering going on. With our now preset options, native AA, I got 88 FPS, which is a little bit lower than native resolution. Of course, as we're applying some upscaling onto a native resolution game, making it look even better than native. This is probably the best way to experience the game visually. Moving to quality, there was a almost 50% FPS boost from 88 to 130 frames. To balanced, 134, just 4%. To performance, 155, 16%. And finally down to the ultra option, which I assume is ultra performance, 178 FPS, which is a boost of 14% compared to the previous option. Again, FSR2 looks the best in this game at pretty much any option that you choose, though I'd try and stick to balanced and above. Moving down to some of the more detailed quality options lower down. First of all, anti-aliasing. Don't use this option at all, just leave it on none if you're going to be using any kind of upscaler. In fact, it should probably be disabled by default. If you're rendering at native resolution for any upscaler, I'd recommend using FSAA as it just improves how things look quite a bit. There's much less noticeable jagged edges. I only saw a 2% FPS drop from 180 to 176 FPS, so it's pretty much a free effect when it comes to adding some quality. Then screen space ambient occlusion. This effect is very subtle, but you can see it in the screen behind me. From off to low, there's a huge amount of shadow added to the scene, making it feel much more alive than it was before. Between low and medium, there's almost no difference. Between medium and high, there's a nice little quality gap. And finally to ultra, I really didn't notice a difference here at all. On. So I'd recommend playing at low at minimum, otherwise playing high does add quite a bit more detail to the game. Anything above that isn't going to result in anything positive, and that's reflected in performance. With SSAO off, I got 216 frames, moving to low 204, so a drop of around 6%, to medium 193, a further drop of 6%, to high 199, which is a gain of 3 FPS, but I'd say this is probably going to be about the same performance as medium as that just doesn't seem to make too much sense. Then finally moving up to ultra, 
you can expect a much bigger FPS drop of about 20%. So from almost 200 frames down to 160, it's definitely not worthwhile playing with it this high at all. So I'd recommend probably low at lowest, if not high at highest. Ultra is just too much and off you lose quite a bit of detail that you would have otherwise. Then distant field ambient occlusion. This is a very subtle effect and I can only really notice a difference on trees and things like that between off and low. It seems like there's cloud shadows added, but that's pretty much it. Between medium and high, I don't see any difference really. For the most part, performance between low and high is about the same, with only about a 3% difference, but setting it all the way down to off, I moved from 180 to 230 frames, a boost of about 20%. This is quite a taxing effect to have on at all, and for the very minimal change in how the game looks, I can't really recommend it. Then motion blur, while usually this is mostly free, this is a per object motion blur. So if a player is running or you're running, there'll be motion blur on you, but not the environment, etc. This makes the game feel a lot more fluid, more things are happening quicker, it feels like, but that is mirrored in performance. When I changed this option from off to on, I saw a drop from 270 to 220 FPS, a drop of about 16%. Again, I'd recommend turning this off just for general motion sickness reasons, but on top of that, this performance drop just isn't worth it. Then texture quality. This completely depends on how much VRAM you have. Personally, between low, medium, and high, I didn't see too much of a difference here, as the game does have quite a simplistic art style comparatively, but of course things are going to improve the higher that you have this option, assuming you have enough VRAM. I didn't see too much of a change in the amount of VRAM used, but maybe on bigger or different maps I suppose. For the most part, if you have a graphics card with 6 or so more gigabytes of VRAM, crank it all the way up to high and forget about it. 5 to 6, put it on medium, and anything below 4 or 5, leave it down to the lowest option. Then distant field shadows. Again, very difficult to see the difference here. I assume it mostly has to do with buildings casting shadows and things like that on these kinds of maps. And again, and again, the performance hit is relatively drastic with this one as well. Moving it from off to on, I dropped from 215 to 190 FPS, so about a drop of 12%. It's not too big, but it is still something. As for the change in how the game looks, there's practically no difference. Then, displacement mapping. Again, an incredibly subtle effect. You can only really see the road changing in front of my character here, but besides that, there's barely any difference. Oh, and the grade as well. However, for the performance cost of about 25%, this is such an expensive effect for so little added to the game. I dropped from about 240 to 180 FPS, which is very noticeable. Then post-processing bloom and effect bloom, both of these options had a very minimal FPS impact, if not none at all. As for how the game changes in the way that it looks, with post-processing bloom, you'll notice more bloom from the sun and things like that poking over buildings, especially distant lights rather than close ones. And effect bloom, I assume, has to do more with the bloom from lasers and bullets and things like that, but the difference is very subtle, if any at all. Performance-wise, again, there's practically no difference. Set it's what you want, and that's fine. Fine. Then area lights. This apparently had to do with beams and things like that, such as from these guardians and these NPCs running around, but ultimately I didn't see any difference visually, and FPS-wise there's no difference either. And the same is to be said about MBOIT. What is MBOIT? Well, MBOIT is Moment-Based Order Independent Transparency. So when a transparent surface moves in front of another one, you'll have better visibility through it or enhanced visual quality in some way with overlapping transparency pan surfaces, you're not really going to see too much of that in this game, if any at all, and of course, performance-wise, there's no difference anyways. Ultimately, if you want to leave this option on, it may have an effect in certain places on certain maps, but for the most part, I couldn't really find anything that demonstrated it. Finally, moving all the way back up to touch on the beginning, DirectX 11 versus Vulkan. What should you pick? Well, I think it mainly has to do with your operating system more than anything. I think if you're playing this game on Linux or Linux-based devices, you only have the option of playing in Vulkan, if I'm not mistaken. However, on Windows, we can play with both Vulkan and DirectX 11, and the performance difference between them is just a little bit sad. Comparing all the different preset graphics options, the game looks about the same, and the difference in FPS between each of the options is very comparable, but performance moving from DirectX 11 to Vulkan is not so much halved, it's more like it's just lost about a third. So from 90 to 60 FPS, or from 260 down to 190, it's okay, but ultimately I'd recommend just sticking with DirectX 11 for now at least.
And that's it. This game is still very much in development with tons of development happening every day that goes by. So do expect these kinds of things to change, especially the work in progress options. And of course, things shouldn't prove as well over time, so these numbers may not be accurate forever. But for now, at least, and the soon foreseeable future, most of the differences discussed here will be about the same anyways. So that's really it. If you'd like to see a concise guide showing exactly what I think you should have set and what you shouldn't, check the description down below for an updated Deadlock FPS optimization guide. Thank you all for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.